All right, we're going to have a little episode of Outside the Box quick because something happened here with uh, a certain person from Xbox and an IGN reviewer that I just want to briefly touch on. So, Super's Lucky, Super Lucky's Tale uh, came out recently on Xbox, and some people have given it decent reviews. Others have not. Uh, a certain person from IGN was one of those people that didn't. Uh, in fact, that person's name is Ryan McCaffrey. Uh, he did not give it a favorable review. It, he gave it a pretty poor review and said that it's a pass. Basically, that people probably shouldn't waste their money on the game. Uh, the, this person uh, responded to a tweet. I mean, the, the, here's the full context. So this guy named Mark Yabera uh, put up a tweet from Eurogamer showing off a Lucky's Tale review. Uh, and this other guy responded and said, wow, really, according to Ryan, the guy from IGN, the game is bad. Uh, I'll give it a whirl, opinions and all. Robert Garcia responded by saying, IGN reviews are the worst. The game is currently rated a 4.7 out of 5 on the Xbox Store. If you let reviews influence your gaming, at least go with reviews written by actual gamers, not paid so-called journalists. And Ryan himself, Ryan McCaffrey, the guy who wrote the IGN review, fired back by saying this, Actual gamers on the Xbox Store don't even have to play the game to leave a review. And I know about that. That's actually a flaw in the Xbox Store. Where pretty much anybody can review the game. Uh, and then he goes on to say, Actual critics and journalists don't quite think so highly of the game. And then he links to the Xbox One Metacritic score for it, which is not very good. Uh, but, see, none of this matters, right? That's all. That in itself is fine. That's just fans being fans. And LOL, IGN, 7.8, too much water, blah, 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 right? Fans are just doing what they do. We get some of that crap here at Nintendo Prime. But here is what's interesting. Shannon Loftus, the GM of Microsoft Studios Publishing, responded to, oh man, responded to Mr. Ryan McCaffrey and said this, Ryan, I appreciate your review. I thought you made some good points. You don't need to actively discourage people from playing the game, though. And herein lies the issue that we're going to talk about here on Outside the Box. Is Here is a person high up at Microsoft telling a game critic that they don't need to actively discourage people from playing the game. Essentially, what he's saying is the review is good, but you shouldn't tell people not to buy the game in the review, which kind of defeats the purpose of a review, right? In many cases, a review is trying to determine if other people should spend money on that game. And if Ryan McCaffrey, which he did conclude uh, that the game isn't very good and people probably shouldn't buy the game, <laughs> um, it's very interesting to have someone high up at Microsoft tell Ryan that he shouldn't do that. Now, obviously, they're not taking review copies away from IGN. Uh, they're not forcing IGN to change the score of the game. And I know there's been a lot of thought out there that all oh, companies pay IGN and other, other places to give higher review scores and blah, 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 which clearly isn't the case, especially when you see here that someone from Microsoft is a little upset that Ryan is telling people not to buy the game. But it's just an interesting conversation around what's the purpose of reviews and should people high up at companies like Microsoft be telling reviewers how to review games, basically saying you can have all these criticisms, but you shouldn't conclude by telling people not to buy a game. Uh, it, it makes me wonder, what does Microsoft in this case, or this person at Microsoft, actually think the purpose of reviews are? Because it's not just feedback and criticism that's for the developers. The feedback and criticism is, is about the game is to inform potential consumers. And if the information present makes Ryan want to suggest that people shouldn't buy the game, that's totally fine. Now, to be fair, Shannon does later tweet, uh, also, folks, you know, because there's obviously Defense Force come out for Microsoft and Shannon. Uh, Shannon did tweet later saying, also, folks, please lay off Ryan. He works incredibly hard and does great things for gaming and gamers. Because obviously, she wasn't ill intent here. She wasn't intending to make, you know, Microsoft fanboys go after Ryan for his review of the game. And the thing is, if they're going to go after Ryan, they, they have to go after several more outlets because... <laughs> um, the Metacritic score is not good. So, 
I throw this at you guys. What role do video game publishers, uh, in this case, I think Microsoft published this game, have in telling reviewers how to review games? Obviously, the big thing here is that the publishers control who gets review copies of games, right? So they could literally tell IGN, sorry, no more review copies of Microsoft Xbox games that are exclusive. Of course, they're not going to do that uh, because there would be major backlash uh, from the gaming community. But it's still interesting to see someone in this high up position at Microsoft being like, hey, man, don't tell people not to buy our game. <laughs> even though you just got done complimenting the review. I mean, literally, it says, Ryan, I appreciate your review. I thought you made some good points. You don't need to actively discourage people from playing the game, though. It, it's it's not just actively discouraging people from playing the game. He's actively discouraging people from buying the game, saying their money is basically spent elsewhere. So, I don't know. It, it's just a weird situation. Uh, thankfully, Nintendo doesn't find themselves mixed up in situations like this very often. But it's not the first time I've heard of this. I've seen other publishers, sometimes even even developers trying to tell reviewers what they can and can't say uh, in regards to whether or not people should buy games. Uh, I've seen NDAs and review embargoes say you're not allowed to give this game a score. Uh, and this also gets to the point where like some you know publishers will actively avoid giving copies of games to reviewers that they know are not going to put you know review their game well because they want to bump their Metacritic score. In fact, we found out, again, it, it's so silly this is still part of the industry, uh, but that certain publishers out there are still giving incentives and bonuses based on Metacritic scores, which to me just seems absolutely ridiculous, especially since Metacritic scores are completely weighted to favor specific outlets. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It's just not something that you should really base... Uh, <laughs> Like, oh, let's put it this way. Let's say you release a game that gets a 70 on Metacritic but sells 5 million copies. Uh, you don't get a bonus on those 5 million copies sold because your Metacritic rating didn't hit 85 or something. Uh, if that That's why it's ridiculous. It should just be BS in sales. Like, if the game sells so many units, hey, you should get a bonus for having a game exceed expectations for sales um, or exceed expectations even for revenue. Uh, if they want to base it on a revenue model, hey, how much money do we want to make from this game? If we make more than that, we should get a payout. Um, I think that feels a lot more fair than basing things bonuses on Metacritic. But, yeah, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below because I personally stand by... Uh, the stance that I don't think publishers or game devs or anything should be telling reviewers, uh, one, how to review their games, and two, what they're allowed to say about the games in, in terms of their opinions on it, and three, they definitely should not be telling them that it's not okay to tell people not to buy the game because that's the whole purpose of reviews to consumers, to inform them uh, with information and opinions uh, if they think the game is worth spending money on. Anyways, folks, that's my take on it. You let me know your hot take down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Gents from Nintendo Prime. And if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, that is all right as well. Dislike that video. Subscribe for more content. And you know what, folks? I will catch you in the next one.